Hey everyone, I'm Kieran O'Donnell, and welcome back to my series on building message-driven systems. Again, we're looking at Azure Service Bus today, and we're talking about message locks. If you saw my previous video about uh, reliable messaging with message brokers, then you'll see that you'll have a, a kind of general understanding about what, what the lock is for. Uh, but otherwise, or just a recap, I'm just gonna pull up some slides here that talk about acknowledgements that we have on a message broker. Um, and so in order to do reliable messaging, we have this system uh, where when we get messages from the message broker, so this is a just like animation that shows kind of messages arriving, and this could be a queue or a subscription, doesn't really matter. But as the messages get given to the application, they actually remain on the queue. So you can see that message one is still kind of there, but it's grayed out. That's signifying the fact this message is locked. Um, so if somebody else came along now and started receiving from this same queue, they would not get message one. It's actually locked by application two. Uh, they would get message two behind it, right? And then another one comes along to, to get it, they'll, they'll come and get message three. And so these, these things are locked until that application kind of responds. So it does some processing on the message uh, and then ideally responds with an acknowledgement. And that's when the message can actually be removed from the queue and everything else kind of moves forward. So that's the general idea about message locks. And so for this session, we're just gonna take a look at how that works with Azure Service Bus. Okay, so here we are now in Visual Studio. Uh, we've got some code that's very similar to the, the code that we've seen before. Uh, and so I'll just quickly walk through it. We've got, we're declaring a connection string for service bus, a name of a topic and a name of subscriptions. We're just gonna show this using subscriptions today. Uh, we're creating a, a connection to our topic with our topic client, and then we're doing a little loop. Uh, we're gonna go around it 10 times. We're gonna uh, make a, a message that just says message and then the time around the loop. Um, and then we're gonna convert that to a byte array and we're gonna send that in our service bus message. And then we're gonna, once we've done all of those, we're gonna write to the console that we sent 10 messages. And so that's to make sure that every time we run this application, there are some messages there waiting for us to consume them. We then create a service, uh, sorry, a subscription client, pass it our connection string, our topic name, and our subscription name. And then I'm passing it here explicitly, the receive mode uh, of peak lock, because we definitely wanna be using reliable messaging. This is the default, so if you don't supply one, service bus will use peak lock uh, by default for you. Um, but we want to, I'm just putting it there to be kind of really explicit that we, we, we're using pick lock. We're not using receive and delete, which won't, which won't do any locks. As soon as the message is sent, it'll be removed from the queue. Um, and that isn't a reliable way to kind of use service bus. And so I'm, I'm just making it explicit. Uh, and then rather than having inline lambdas, I've just moved, uh, I made a function for a message ha called message handler and another function called exception handler. And these are just declared just down here below, below this one. Uh, and then once we've registered our message handler, I'm doing console reline just to keep the application open. And so now taking a look at the message handler method, uh, it's kind of same as before, where you're taking our message body as a byte array, converting that back into a string. Uh, and then before we're doing a console uh, write line, but actually what we're doing here now, just to kind of demonstrate, we're, we're, we're taking a look at some more properties of the message. Um, and so one of these properties of this message uh, is called system properties. And this is, um, has the type system properties collection, but it's basically a bunch of things that service bus is tracking about your message. And so we look in there, uh, there's a few different properties on this, but one of them is uh, the lock token. And so this is like the ID of that lock uh, that service bus has put on that message for us. So remember when it sends us the message, it locks it for us. Uh, it gives us that lock token and we're gonna need that if we ever wanna tell service bus to do something like release the lock because we can't process the message or that we've, you know, when we want to send an acknowledgement back, so we have processed the message, it can delete the message, we're going to need that lock token. Uh, and then the second one here is this locked until UTC. And so service bus locks aren't indefinite, it will actually it'll lock it for a, a period of time specified on the queue or the subscription. Uh, and then when that expires, when, when, that, when that time has elapsed, it will release the lock, if we haven't responded with an acknowledgement, I mean, it'll release that lock, it'll assume that we failed, and then that message will be available for consumption again. And so these are the these are the two we're kind of looking at. So we're going to take this locked until UTC. Uh, we're also getting the lock token out here. And then I'm writing to the console. I've received a message, what the message text is. And then um, I'm saying this is locked for, uh, and then I'm doing locked until, and then subtracting the current UTC value on my machine. So that's going to give me about the amount of time between now and when that token, that lock token expires, and then just printing out the total seconds. So this should tell me how long those messages are locked for. So I'm just gonna run the application now and we'll see kind of what comes up. So here's the application. It sent it to messages pretty quickly. Uh, and then, you know, message zero, message one, message two, three, four, they're all coming in and they're locked for about 30 seconds. We see here that it shows us 29 point something seconds. 
Uh, and that difference is possibly to do a little bit with uh, with clock drift. Um, so me and service bus don't have the same time uh, exactly on our clocks. Uh, and so that's probably what that difference is there. And so that value, that, that 29, 30 second value is actually configured for a for the subscription or for the queue. And so here's my uh, Azure service bus shown in the Azure portal. You see I'm on my um, demo subscription one, which is underneath my demo topic, which is part of my service bus namespace Kieran Chuchu demos. We can see here, we've got this message lock duration set to 30 seconds. This is where we can figure that value. So you can do it when you create a new subscription, you get to set that value, or you can come in here and change that. So I can change that 30 seconds down to five seconds. So that's going to make it uh, now only do locks for five seconds when we receive those messages. Now, if I come back and run this application again, uh, let me just jump back in here. Uh, if I run this again now, well, what I'll start to see uh, is those messages will arrive and their lock time will just be, uh, it now shows kind of four seconds, but it's a, it's about five seconds, um, uh, you know, adjusting for the, for the, the difference in our clocks. So that's uh, that kind of demos that or demonstrates that we have this kind of uh, lock timeout for this lock. What we're going to do now is we're going to make it so we actually take a little bit too long to process our message. So I'm going to uh, task delay. Uh, I go for six seconds just to make it like definitely sure that I'm. Need to wait that. Uh, definitely sure that, that we're taking too long to process our message, uh, and then we can figure out kind of what happens with that. So I'm going to run that application again. Uh, and, and we should run into a problem here because we're taking too long to process these messages. So we have a six second delay for each message that we process. Okay, so that's kind of interesting now. We've got this challenge that we're not getting any problems with that. We're taking too long for, uh, and we're not getting any problems. So let me come in and try and figure out why that is. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna come down here again and ask for the message. I'm basically gonna print the same thing out. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, message finished. And then I'm gonna re-get that message uh, system properties locked until UTC. We're going to rework out how long we've got left on our uh, on our timer. And run that application again. So I have our six second delay. And it's going to show that we finished message four. Oh, this is from the previous run because I'd, I'd ended it before we, uh, we drained them all. But we now actually have there's more time left over here. And so what's actually happening for us right now is that while we're in that delay, service bus knows that we're alive, our application is still working, uh, but we're taking too long. And so it's automatically going and asking for an extension of that lock for us. Um, so we aren't, we aren't kind of running out of time because service bus is automatically extending our time for us. Uh, and we do actually have control over that, but I'm just commenting out the task there. We do have control over that behavior. Uh, where we create our subscription and register our message handler, we can actually do this a little bit differently and we can create message handler options. Um, when we create one of these, this is where we pass in our exception handler now. So I'm gonna take that out of that uh, register method, uh, register message handler, sorry, and put that in there. And then in this, we have a couple of different properties that we need to set. such as max auto renew duration. And so this is where we get to say, how long should service bus keep extending the time for us? And we can totally turn that functionality off by saying time span dot zero. And so service bus will not attempt to, oh, don't need the semicolon on there. Service bus will not attempt to, to, uh, to increase our, our lock duration. And so then instead of passing the exception handler, we can pass in our message handler options. And so we're kind of telling service bus um, to handle our messages a little bit differently than it's default here. And so now, actually, if I put that task, uh, I put that await in there to make sure that we run out of time again and run the application. 
what will happen if service bus doesn't extend that time for us? And so we sent our messages, we received a message. We've got this lock uh, for kind of four more seconds. We take six seconds and actually now we get, uh, we get an error. So I'm gonna stop the application running right now. So what we're seeing here is that uh, service bus says the lock supplied is invalid, either the lock expired or the message has already been removed from the queue. And so what's basically happening here is when I get to the end of this function, so my message handler, I'm coming in here, uh, doing a bunch of different things with our message. We're doing something that takes six seconds. For us, it's task delay, but you may be calling a web service or writing it to a database or doing whatever it is that you're doing in your processing. When we get to the end here, service bus is trying, the service bus driver, the client that we're using, is trying to go back to service bus and say, hey, he's processed that message. You can take that off the queue now and give me another one. And when we go back and we pass back our lock token to service bus to say, I finished processing this message. So it says, sorry, I don't have that lock token anymore. That's expired. And so actually if another client had come to service bus um, kind of during that six seconds, once we got past that, you know, that, that lock period, it actually would have been able to take message one uh, from message again. It would have been able to take that same message because our lock would have expired. Um, and so that basically shows you the, uh, the kind of the way locks work. This again is another really critical part about how we do reliable messaging with service bus. Um, we need to have our messages locked so we've got some time to process them before something else comes and processes them. Um, the one thing that's important to remember when, we, when we're, we're setting our lock times, if we set them too short, we need to make sure that we aren't, uh, we're giving ourselves enough time to actually do the processing that we need. Otherwise, we'll keep attempting to process the message uh, and we'll, um, uh, we won't be successful, like we'll always kind of fail. Um, the other option is if we set them too long, um, it means that uh, if there is come some kind of error, that message is going to become unavailable for that longer period of time. Something else won't be able to process it. Um, and this becomes really important when we've got uh, what we call competing consumers. So more than one thing reading from a queue or reading from a subscription, um, then we're going to, long, you know, the longer we wait to, to, to have another go at processing a message that's failed, uh, the further from its original point in the queue it will be processed. So. So we'll have, we'll have out of order processing by a greater extent if we have long, long lock times. So there's a bit of a balance here to strike as to how long you want to be able to lock something for. Service bus's default is 30 seconds. Um, you can set it down really low like we did, um, or you can set it up to as long as five minutes, depending on what, what the processing is you need to do, uh, and then how much you care about uh, processing in order. So that's a basic introduction to lock tokens. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, uh, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel to see the uh, the future videos, and then hit post notifications so you understand when I, uh, you, you get notified when I when I release new videos, uh, and then hit me up on social media. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time.